everybody, my name's Claire and I'm from Pathway. And Pathway, we go around different schools over North London, sharing a little something about what Christians believe. And at the moment, we are doing a series, a, a fun series on our Bible Zoo series. And we're looking at different animals in the Bible and seeing what God is saying in those and what we can get from those stories. And somewhere around is, is Ashley. I think he's joining us in a minute. <laughs> start again and somebody else ruins that one what then eh wouldn't it be nice if we could live in a world where things didn't get lost yes. or broken or or damaged hmm? would be wouldn't it actually that reminds me of our story today from the bible it's a story i'm sure there are times where all of us when we look at some of the sad things that happen in the world around us, like wars, crime, sickness, and we want a way to fix the world and make it right. Well, today's story from the Bible is all about that, how God makes things all new and fixes a broken world. In fact, when I ask the question, can God, our creator, make all things new, can you boys and girls join in with us and say, yes, he can, and that includes you. Shall we have a practice? Can God, our creator, make all things new? Yes, he can, and that includes you. Great, well done. So, uh, which animal uh, is our Bible story about today? Is it, um, let me take some guesses, maybe a giraffe, a, a monkey, a goat? Yes, yeah, yeah, those. Well, which one? All of them. All of them? There's a Bible story with a giraffe, a goat, yes. and a monkey. Yes, and lots of other animals too. In fact, it's a story with every animal in it. Every animal? That sounds a bit like our zoo. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, well, it is a bit like a zoo. A floating zoo. Ah. It's the story of Noah's Ark. You probably might have heard some of you of the Noah's Ark story. And just like your painting was spoil ash, well... Our story starts as God looked at the world he made and saw that the people had spoilt it. Mm. People had forgotten all about him and, well, they were filled with hatred towards each other and they were violent towards one another too. There were different things like fighting and stealing, mm -hmm. cheating, lying... All the things that Rash have put in on there, the injustice. God was really sad that what he made so perfectly now had well, gone so bad. A bit like we were saying, your art, your beautiful artwork was spoiled. What would God do about the world? Can God, our creator, make all things new? Yes, he can. And that includes you. Yes, he can. So God said, I'm going to start all over again and make the world afresh. I'll wash away all the crime, all the pain and all the wrong in the world and make it all new. But God looked down and saw that there was only one person who followed him closely and trusted in him. And that man was called Noah. So God spoke to Noah and he said, Noah, the world has become a bad and sad place. I'm going to send a flood to wash away all the crime and all that is wrong in the world. And I want you to build a boat to keep your family and two of all the animals safe. And I want you, Noah, to help build the new world. Well, Noah listened to God and he built the boat. He started to build this big, 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 really big boat as well. The boat was 140 metres long, 23 metres wide and 13.5 metres tall with three levels. Can you imagine how big that boat must have been? 
Wow, probably bigger than a football pitch, right, Ash? And bigger than a school hall. Yes, oh, I'm sure it was. Oh, well, you know, it needed to be big enough to fit, well, every two kinds of animals in the world. One male, one female, and seven of the certain kinds of animals, like birds and reptiles and so on. That must have taken some time to build that boat. Yes, I can imagine it did. And so God told Noah that he was going to be on the ark for a very, very long time. So he needed to stock it up with plenty of food for seven days. A flood was coming and God would send all the animals to Noah to enter the ark. Wow. Can you imagine all the animals coming along to you? Maybe you could all join in by making the sounds of the animals as we go along. So, there were two of all the pigs. Pigs. Oink, oink, oink. There were two sheep. What noise do sheep make? Ba ba ba. There were two dogs. Woof, 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 woof. Woof, I like doggies. There were two cats. Meow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There were two cows. Moo. There were two mice. <laughs> Wouldn't want those on the boat, would you? Eating all the supplies. Oopsie. There were two chickens. chickens. <laughs> there were two lions. lions. <laughs> there were two horses. Yay! Yeah. There were two donkeys. Donkeys. Oh, You imagine the... all these animals had to get along with one another. Like, <laughs> there were two frogs. Ready, ready. Imagine those bouncing all around the place. There were two monkeys. Monkeys. <laughs> swinging from the rafters. There were snakes. And snails. Well, what noise do snails make? They don't really make any Slippery. sound. Maybe. Except if you tread them and they go crunch. But don't Aww. do that. No, don't do that. Poor snails. Well, oh, anyway, there was lots and lots of animals and even more animals. All of the animals and Noah's family entered the ark and then suddenly water burst from the ground and rain began to fall. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Until water covered everything. That's longer than the school holidays, Claire. Raining for 40 days. Mind you, sometimes it seems like it rains for the whole of the school holidays, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, not like this. It was much bigger than this. There was so much rain that it covered the whole earth. And the houses, it covered the trees, the mountain tops. All you could see everywhere for miles, all around, and miles and miles and miles was water everywhere. Everything had been swept away by the flood. But Noah and his family and the animals were safe inside the ark. For 150 days, the water remained like that. Wow, that must have been difficult to be cooped up inside a boat for so long. We thought lockdown was hard. Just imagine the seasickness. <laughs> yes. And it was longer than that because for seven months of being in the ark, the water had gone down enough that the ark came to the rest on the top of the mountain. After ten months, can you imagine, they could see the top of the mountain. So Noah did a little test. He opened one of the windows on the boat and he sent a raven, a bird, to see whether it was safe and they could find a ground which to land on. But the ravens couldn't find anywhere and they kept flying back to the ark. And so Noah then sent a dove. He sent a dove out to see whether there was any place for it to land. So there was nothing there, he just came back. Noah waited another week and sent the dove again. And this time it came back with a really small branch from a tree in its beak. So this was a good sign. Now there were trees and they were not underwater, come with a branch in his mouth. So Noah waited even another week just in case and he sent out another dove for the third time. And this time 
it had found somewhere safe to land. It didn't even come back to the boat. So this was great news. So after almost a year on a boat, can you imagine the smell on the boat? Noah, his family and all the animals were able to leave the boat finally. Can you imagine what a relief they all felt as they stepped out into the boat? It must have been really bright into this new, new world. A world with no violence anymore, no crime, no sadness, no anger. Noah built an altar to God and God spoke to him saying, See this rainbow in the sky. Let it be a reminder to you that never again will I send a flood to destroy the earth. Shame about my rainbow though. Look, it's still spoiled. It's got all this stuff over it. Yes, but remember, can God, the creator, make all things new? Yes, he can. And that includes you. Yes, remember, this story is all about God fixing what went wrong. You know, water in the Bible is a picture of washing things away. Things that are wrong and leaving our old life behind and starting a fresh, a new, fresh life. You see, God washed away all that was wrong with the world. With the flood, he started afresh. But sadly, things didn't stay that way since Noah. You see, the Bible says that just like the stains on Ash's artwork, we can all do things in our lives that are a bit messy, that spoil our world and are kind of like the stains too inside ourselves. You see, when God looks down at the world sometimes, he's, he can make him sad to see wrong things that still go on. None of us are perfect and, well, we can't love each other perfectly all the time and be perfect. We hurt others and sometimes hurt God and we do this by perhaps not telling the truth or perhaps we'd be rude if we're having a, a bit of a bad day and maybe we can cheat or, or take something that's not ours or not playing fairly. You know, it leaves stains on our own lives. They are signs that, well, things are broken and not the way God intended them to be. But rather than start the world again, God made a whole different way to start all over again for us. You see, Christians believe this wonderful good news that God sent Jesus to wash away all the things that we've ever done wrong. Past, present, future. All so that we could have a fresh new life and a good new start. You see, God gives us and gives us a clean heart when we trust in his son Jesus. And see, that doesn't mean that, you know, Christians think, oh, they're perfect. Far from it, I can tell you. It just means that Christians, like me, believe that, well, on my own, I am nothing without God. Absolutely nothing. You see, but with God, I know that I have everything I need. And, well, with his help, we can, and I can, help to try and change the world. You see, God takes the bad stuff. And he uses it for good because of the pain and the problems in the world. He sent Jesus to put things right. And now we can see how much he loves us and the world. And how much the world needs him too, right? And the Bible tells us that one day, good God will wipe away all the tears, all the pain, all the sickness, all the death. And the world will be just made right and perfect again. It will just be the way it's meant to be. Can God, the creator, make all things new? Yes, he can. And that includes you. Ah, oh, Claire, well, thank you so much for fixing my rainbow. Look, my rainbow looks okay now. And look, we took that and made something good from it. <laughs> well... And that's been a really helpful lesson for all of us, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. How God takes uh, something that's bad and he, he starts afresh. He makes something new. He makes something good from it. Well, let's take a moment now to think about some of the things that we'd like to see fixed in the world. Some of the things that are broken that we want to see made new. And maybe this message from the Bible of a fresh start of second chances has inspired you too. Let's take a moment to think about what you've taken away from today's story.
Well, thank you so much for listening so well. Thank you for watching today's story. And we look forward to sharing another Bible story with you again soon. But bye for now.